Welcome to another edition of Red Meat, the final post-debate edition. Uh, I am Jim Garrity, along with Mark Hemingway, and we, the uh, third debate between John McCain and Barack Obama has just completed. Uh, we got a little bit of the taste of the first post-debate spin. Uh, it left me thoroughly confused. I, I, you know, it's one of those things where I know what I think. I, I no longer have any faith in my ability to determine what the American people will think. So, Mark, I'm turning it over to you. Uh, what will the reaction be? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't really... I, I, I don't read tea leaves, Jim. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, but I will say, I, I think McCain uh, um, did much better than he has in, in the previous two debates. Um, I don't think there's any question about that. The question and now simply is, though, in, is it too late? I mean, I have a feeling that uh, there's a lot of people, even people that are inclined to be sympathetic toward McCain, that at this point in time are just sort of disgusted and fed up. They're not happy about the way the campaign has been run over the last several weeks, mm -hmm. the way the polls are headed, and the amount of time that's left. They've just, they're just you know, assuming the outcome at this point in time, and, and therefore they're inclined not to give McCain the benefit of the doubt on much of anything. I was about to say, uh, between last Thursday night, that second debate with, moderated by Brokaw, to this one, a really rough patch in the polls, uh, a sense of, of true division within the McCain camp. Some folks really want to go after the heirs and, and write stuff, and... Saw, you know, McCain himself apparently not having the appetite for it. Uh, errors came up a bit tonight. Uh, Jeremiah Wright didn't. Um, it was, is this going to right the ship at all? Is this, is this a good enough performance so that it'll uh, stop the bleeding and maybe get to uh, kickstart the, the McCain for these last couple of weeks? Well, you never know how the American public is going to react to something like that. I mean, I think McCain did have some strong moments. I mean, I do think that there was a conscious effort on his part to connect with ordinary voters this time around. You know, mm. The Joe the Plumber stuff was, was good. I mean, the fact that he was repeating certain themes, mm. like the spread the wealth around and stuff like that, these mm. are good ways of connecting with people and, and getting a message across. And, and you know, I'm, I'm glad McCain you know, picked up on this sort of thing better late than never. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, as for his campaign being a mess, I mean, frankly, this mess that the campaign is in has, has been in the works for a long time now. I mean, there have been two elements of that campaign that have been at, that, at that each other's throats um, for a long time now. I mean, you have McCain, the maverick reformer people that have been with him forever, and then you have the more traditional Steve Schmidt Republican consultant types that are a little bit more cutthroat, a little more willing to do what, what it takes to win. And there's been this constant internal tension here. And the fact that they haven't come with a compelling response or been able to advance a coherent theme the past couple of weeks has, has really put that, 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 that division out on display. Um, you know, and, and then there are some, you know, other concerns within the campaign. I mean, frankly, there's some Giuliani people in some high-level positions of that campaign that, like, you know, after Giuliani's campaign, I'm, I'm wondering how that happened. Um, but, you know, who knows? Uh, Those staffers can direct their emails to Mark Hemingway of National Review. <laughs> You can find his email address in the corner. Um, actually, I guess it's one of those things I've now reached the point where uh, I, I'm seeing all kinds of really terrible omens. But having said that, one of the things I really wanted to see tonight was McCain really make a case on the economy. I wanted him to explain uh, the financial markets mess and how he got into it. But he found an alternate route, and I think it came with that Joe the Plumber thing. Joe the Plumber, you would have thought, was a third candidate. He came up some, you know, come up so many times. Fifteen this, times, I believe. Really? Okay. Yes. So... People are going to pay attention to that, that exchange between Joe the Plumber and Barack Obama. And Obama's closing comment of, I want to spread the wealth around. Yeah. Well, Joe the Plumber, first of all, not a guy I want to run into in a dark alley. Uh, tough looking guy. But look, Joe the Plumber talked about how he'd spent his whole life yeah. working to be in a position to buy a company in which he's going to have something in the neighborhood of that $250,000 that, that Barack Obama sees as rich. But because most of that money is tied up in his business, he doesn't see himself as wealthy. And I don't think he necessarily fits a lot of Americans' common definition of the wealthy. Not, never mind, you know, Bill Gates or something. This is not Gordon Gecko. This is not, you know, uh, uh, the guy in the top hat from the Monopoly game. This is, you know, the American entrepreneurial class who, who is not doing this, this glamorous uh, uh, exploitative work. And I think to a certain extent, by emphasizing, you know, there was this slip of the tongue in which he called Obama senator government. Yeah. Look, if that, if that message has any more saliency in, with, among the public, McCain made it tonight. Now, yeah. maybe it won't. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll see, I guess. Well, yeah, but, but I would make a distinction there. I mean, I think you're right there. I mean, it'd be great if, you know, the Joe the Plumber spread the wealth around, you know, exchange gets out there. That'd be fantastic for McCain. But the fact of the matter is, is that's still an argument by proxy. The fact of the matter is we're still a couple of ways, weeks away from the, the, the campaign. And McCain can't coherently explain why Obama, the Democrat, with all kinds of crazy new spending 
and a, a, a tax problem that as far as a, a tax program, as far as I can tell, is a transparent lie in, in a lot of ways in, in the way he's promising to give tax cuts to 95% of the people uh, and never mind that 40% of those people don't pay any taxes to begin with, and that tax cut amounts to, you know, an actual, like, you know, essentially a rebate check from the government, mm -hmm. um, courtesy someone who's wealthy. Now, that is not what I think Americans, you know, like or what Americans expect from a, you know, tax plan, you know, or what they would, what, what they're being told is a tax cut. And McCain can't explain that. He, he still can't explain why the most liberal guy to run for president since maybe George McGovern, mm -hmm. you know, is getting away with running as a fiscal conservative. And if that is the position McCain is in, it does not look good. Yeah. I would know George McGovern flew a bomber, uh, much more hawkish than uh, Barack <laughs> Obama. So you do, Mr. McGovern. And also McGovern's doing uh, anti-card check ads. So a couple well, of points. Let's give, give, let's give George McGovern the credit he deserves. Thanks, George. You know. um, so we're, we're left in a, a very tough spot for the McCain camp. Um, is there stuff they can take away from this debate um, that they kind of can turn into a compelling message in these last three weeks or so? Well, Jim, that's, that's a really good question. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think what you pointed out before with the Joe the Plumber stuff I mean, and, and his repeated emphasis on the spread the wealth around stuff, I mean, that's a good theme. I think that's a good thing to, to seize upon. And, and I think that McCain actually did a good job of planting the seeds of that, that that could be built upon. Mm. Um, and then, you know, there, there's, there were some other there were some other things in there. I mean, I think that uh, um, uh, McCain, for better or for worse, he does a terrible job explaining it, but I think that uh, um, um, he can actually now get out information about his health care plan. Mm. Uh, McCain actually has a very good health care plan, and uh, because McCain is McCain and he only likes to talk about certain issues, he hasn't been talking about health care. Well, for good or for ill, you mm -hmm. know, he maybe didn't explain it very well, but he was talking about health care at length tonight. So maybe he can start talking about it in, 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 in on the campaign trail, and people will start paying attention to what a good health care plan it is. Uh, it, it's a, a point worth noting. And also, I heard this today. It shows you kind of the fascinating state of this race. You know, six to nine months ago, people everyone said, this is going to be, this is going to be a, a year it's all about uh, the Iraq war. Yeah. And then about six months ago to three months ago, people thought it's going to be about gas prices and energy yeah. prices. <clears throat> gas is 325 where I live out in Virginia right now. Yeah. It, it definitely... The, the issue right now is the economy. Yeah. People getting their 401k statements and, and shrieking in horror. Um, we, we've kind of reached a point where somebody was observing today, uh, it is now four to one, the economy versus the next highest issue. And it's yep. one of those things where the spotlight and, and the debate, the terms of the debate have been focused on one issue. I think very much to McCain's detriment because he made a, a great point tonight that I just kind of loved and to me tells you all kinds of things about Barack Obama uh, that he wants to meet with Hugo Chavez, yeah. you know, our, our worst enemy in the South American region, but he does not want a free trade agreement with Colombia, our best ally on yeah. the, you know, in the region. Barack Obama, really tough on our friends, really easy on our enemies. I mean, that's, that's, that, that's all you really kind of need to know. And unfortunately, the American people have made it very clear that's not something they're thinking about as they head into the voting booth this year. No, I, again, uh, but, but again, I have to sort of lay this at McCain's feet. You know, it's like he's getting there and he's getting these, these punches in, but he's, he's not... He's not getting the knockout every time. Uh, you know, I mean, these, there, there are these openings. I mean, like, like, he made that point, and it's a good point, but he didn't somehow, like, thematically or otherwise really drive that point home. And he did that again and again and again tonight. And, mm -hmm. and I, again, I, I laud his performance, and I think he did a much better job. And if this were the first debate, you know, I think that it would really color people's, perception, people's perceptions of things. But it's the last debate, and, and, I, and I just don't know if it's good enough. Yeah. Uh, somebody had said to me earlier, the McCain campaign is a set of really sharp tactics looking for a strategy. Um, <laughs> anyway, we all know the difference uh, between tactics and strategy. One of the top topics in that, in that first debate. Um, this is, like I said, our last uh, post-debate red meat edition. But uh, Thank goodness. Yeah, well, after the excitement of Bro Tom Brokaw's edition. The good news is there is more red meat in your future. Uh, various editions talking about the race in the coming weeks. So uh, keep looking in the corner. Keep looking here on YouTube. And once again, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks.